Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Back in September, India's Vikram lander was lost on its way to touch down on the moon. And despite independent radio telescope data suggesting that it collided with the moon at about 300 kilometers per hour, there were many who still held out hope, especially those who felt that national pride was at stake. Well, now we can confirm for sure that an impact site has been found and made public. While ISRO stated that they had imaged the site on September 10th, that they could see the lander that was just pointing in the wrong direction, they never published their image. Instead, the images we have are coming from the NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. We have a before and after, and you can see this comparison here as the after has a whole bunch of, well, spots all over it. And what's really worth noting here is that the site was actually located by someone called Shanmuga Subramanian. He's an engineer in India and he spent his free time poring over images from the NASA spacecraft after they were made public. He first started posting his uh, potential debris finds and impact marks based on the NASA images from September where NASA couldn't find anything because the illumination was correct. Again, October came and went and nothing was publi publicly announced, but he had a few leads. NASA began following up on this and now they credit him with giving the information required to find the lander. Meanwhile, ISRO has played his part down by saying, well, we already found it back in September, and since they never shared the image, I don't give them any credit at all, and I'm kind of annoyed with them, to be honest. But seriously, congratulations to Sean for his work on this. So what do we know? Well, the impact has spread debris over several kilometers, and we see a number of sites with disturbed regolith, which have also been identified in the same frame. In this image, the spacecraft would have been moving downwards and the intended landing site was about 750 metres to the south of the impact site. Some of the debris has actually gone back north along the approach. Much more has gone south. Uh, now, to throw a piece of debris on the moon about 3 kilometres, you would throw it like at a 45 degree angle at 70 metres per second. So this is actually sort of consistent with the ballpark impact speed, but since the angles and the speeds of the debris would have been distributed all over the place, it's uh, possible that the tanks ruptured and that propelled some parts even further. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter camera is fantastic, but it can't identify any particular parts of the lander. The biggest pieces are maybe one or two pixels across. Also, do notice this big piece of debris that flew maybe 150 meters southeast, and then it rolled along the surface making a trail. And I think this might be the bulk of the lander. Of course, it'd be nice if we had a better resolution camera, hint, hint. So it's difficult to imagine how ISRO could have looked at this site and then thought the lander was just sitting on its side with nothing more than a poorly aligned antenna keeping it communicating. But yeah, they haven't shared their images. So they have actually shared an image from their camera and that's great. They've also shared some fantastic uh, data from their synthetic synthetic aperture radar system, which uh, allows them to look at for uh, you know particulates and other structure. And there's an infrared spectrometer, I believe, which is also giving out new data. As for an explanation of why the Vikram lander crashed, well, they have apparently completed a report and an analysis and it is blamed on a software error. As of right now, the report hasn't been made available, or at least I haven't been able to find it. But there is a quote uh, from a politician which uh, says, summarizes the events as the first place, phase of descent was performed nominally from an altitude of 30 kilometers to 7.4 kilometers above the lunar surface. The velocity was reduced from 1,683 meters per second to 146 meters per second. During the second phase of descent, the reduction in velocity was more than the designed value. Due to the deviation, the initial conditions at the start of the fine breaking phase were beyond the design parameters. As a result, Vikram hard landed with 500 meters of the designated landing site. So what does what does this actually tell us? Well, okay, it doesn't tell us very much, but uh, so between the course breaking phase and the fine breaking phase, there's a sort of transition phase as it goes from a horizontal thrust, you know, re reducing lateral velocity to essentially a vertical transition. This is, I think, it's a coasting phase. And during this phase, I think that's when the vehicle was seen to flip upside down. And so the question of what parameters were beyond 
those expected for the fine breaking phase. It could be the attitude or it could be the engine simply didn't throttle down and therefore during the transition it slowed down too much. So the fine braking, it was perhaps given start and end conditions that it couldn't accommodate with the engine throttle it had and therefore led it to sort of uh, take an attitude that didn't work and ultimately crash into the surface of the moon. But I would really love to see that report because, of course, these summaries are, they never give me the meat that I really want. And given that Isro haven't released the photo that they claim to have taken, I'm not really holding my breath expecting to see the full report. But regardless, I still say Isro should be proud of getting as close as they did. And I am looking forward to Chandrayaan 3 attempting to land on the moon. Uh, they apparently have funded it. It is going to be a lander only since the uh, Chandrayaan 2 orbiter is going is doing great work. So perhaps we can look forward to another landing attempt from India next year. And I will certainly be watching and hoping that it performs as intended. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.